Today marks the 25th anniversary of a law that has affected millions of Americans. It was a law that would, came about because of a dare. It happened in an airport in Phoenix, Arizona. I was catching a flight from Phoenix to St. Louis. I think Chicago, come to think of it. And I was late, and I ran up to the United Airlines counter, and the ticket agent started processing my ticket to get on the flight, and she said to me, here's your boarding pass, and I looked at it, and I noticed that she had put me into the smoking section on the airplane. And I said to her, I don't want to sit in the smoking section. Isn't there something you can do about this? She says, you came here too late, and incidentally, Congressman, you, there's something you can do about it. I got on that airplane, got stuck in the middle seat in the smoking section at the back of the plane, surrounded by smokers, wedged in there, and looked around the plane and thought, this makes no sense at all. There's an older person who may have a pulmonary problem. There's a mother with a baby. They're sitting in the non-smoking section, two rows away from me. And I thought to myself, I'm going to do something to change this. And I went back to the House of Representatives. I was a relatively new member of Congress, and I introduced a bill to ban smoking on airplanes. My staff thought I was crazy. Nobody had ever beaten the tobacco lobby at anything. And to take them on, and most of the airline industry, was a fool's errand. But I did it anyway, and I got a lot of help along the way from some amazing colleagues. And I finally got a chance to bring it to the floor for a vote. And to the shock and surprise of the tobacco lobby, we won. We banned smoking on airplane flights of two hours or less. I called my friend Frank Lautenberg, who was the senator from New Jersey, and I asked him if he would take up the cause here in the United States Senate. He agreed to, and he passed the same measure. So this day marks the 25th anniversary of the signing into law of banning smoking on airplanes. Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book called The Tipping Point. It turns out that moment was a tipping point because people all across America 25 years ago started asking a very basic question. If secondhand smoke is dangerous in an airplane, isn't it dangerous in a train, on a bus, in an office, in a hospital, in a restaurant, in a tavern, in a bingo hall, and the list went on and on. And all across the United States, states started changing laws banning smoking. Today, if you walked into the doors of the Capitol here smoking a cigarette, someone would stop you and say, wait a minute, we don't do that here. In the old days, nobody would have thought twice, and there were ashtrays all over. When I first came to the Senate, there were no rules when it came to smoking, none. We have developed them after I made a few points to those in charge. But that was the culture, and that was the situation 25 years ago. I think that effort to take smoking off airplanes has led to a lot of other dramatic efforts to protect Americans from secondhand smoke and from dangerous situations. I think lives have been saved. There's so many of us who can tell family stories about losses related to lung cancer and pulmonary disease. I can tell my story. I was 14 years old when my father died of lung cancer. He was 53 years old, smoked two packs of camels a day, and died an early death. I didn't stand by his bed at the hospital and say, I'll get even with that tobacco lobby. But I remembered him as I started this battle. So I just wanted to make a note in the record today uh, in the Senate to salute the memory of my friend Frank Lautenberg, who was my partner in passing this important legislation, and to remind us there are other things we can do to make this world a little better and a little safer. One of those things relates to e-cigarettes, this new invention that tobacco companies are jumping up and down to market to children in America. We've seen in a short period of time the number of kids using these electronic cigarettes double. It has a chemical in it, the same one as a cigarette, nicotine, that's addictive. And the tobacco companies know that if they can lure children into cigarettes or e-cigarettes, they're going to create an addiction by these young people that will be tough to break and won't be healthy at all. I hope the Food and Drug Administration will step up and do their job, regulate these, uh, these products, these e-cigarette products, protect the children across America.